When this woman took a picture with a gorilla, she couldn't have anticipated what she was about to witness. Ambico, affectionately known as Coco, was a female western lowland gorilla born on July 4, 1971, and she passed away on June 19, 2018. She arguably held the title of one of the most, if not the most renowned gorillas in history, owing to her remarkable collaboration with Dr. Francine Patterson, also known as Penny. Francine played a pivotal role in imparting a range of remarkable skills to Coco, with the most astounding being proficiency in American Sign Language, ASL, enabling the gorilla to communicate with humans in an unprecedented manner. Coco's story began at the San Francisco Zoo, where she was born to her biological parents, Jacqueline and Juana. She was the 50th gorilla born in captivity and one of the first babies to be fully accepted by her mother. Coco stayed with her mother until she turned one when she became seriously ill and had to go to the zoo's hospital. Around that time, Penny, a graduate student at Stanford University, and Charles Pasternak started taking care of Coco as part of their research. When Penny first met Coco, she sensed that this ape was unique. Penny had always dreamed of communicating with animals, so she asked the zoo if she could try to teach Coco sign language, hoping to bridge the gap between animals and humans. The zoo agreed, but they had to commit to spending at least four years working with the baby gorilla. Because Coco got sick, she had to be kept away from her mother. Since they were apart for a long time, the people at the zoo were worried that her mother, Jacqueline, might not accept her back. Even though Penny was teaching Coco sign language, the zoo still owned Coco and could ask for her back anytime. To make sure their efforts weren't wasted, Penny started the Gorilla Foundation, a non-profit group she created in 1976. With this organization, Penny raised money to buy Coco from the zoo. After buying Coco, they moved her to a trailer near Penny's home in Woodside, California, and later to a preserve in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Coco spent most of her 46 years there, and Penny, her teacher and caregiver, taught her over 1,000 signs in a special sign language for gorillas called Gorilla Sign Language, GSL. This put Coco's vocabulary at the same level as a three-year-old human. In contrast to other experiments attempting to teach sign language to other primates, Penny had also simultaneously exposed Coco to spoken English from an early age, and it was reported that the gorilla understood 2,000 words of spoken English in addition to the signs. In an interview at the time, Penny said that Coco liked to use sign language creatively. She occasionally made up new words and signs which were amazingly appropriate, as she was able to string known words together in novel and meaningful constructions. She confessed that Coco also had a sense of humor and played word games. Along with her extraordinary ability to learn sign language, Coco also loved to have pets, one of which was a small kitten that she famously named All Ball and whom she loved very much. She received the animal on her birthday in 1984 from a selection of abandoned kittens. Coco cared for the kitten as if he were a baby gorilla. Researchers said that she tried to nurse All Ball and was very gentle and loving. They believed that Coco's nurturing of the kitten and the skills she gained through playing with dolls would be helpful in Coco's learning how to nurture an offspring, as they had plans to mate her with a male gorilla in the hopes that she would teach their offspring sign language without any interference from humans. Sadly, this did not happen, as she died before becoming a mother. The amazing gorilla also adored taking photos. Penny first discovered the gorilla's fascination with the camera and photographs. When the scientists decided to take a selfie with the animal after snapping the quick picture, Penny looked back closely at the picture, only to be shocked. Coco was looking directly at the camera, as if she knew what it was and how it operated. From that moment on, it seemed as if Penny had unlocked a new interest in Coco. Whenever the scientists had a camera around, the curious gorilla would ask to play with it. One of the very first pictures that Coco snapped was a self-portrait in a mirror. In the picture, Penny can be seen holding a camera on a sort of grip at the bottom, while Coco is looking through the eyepiece and pressing the trigger button. This remarkable ability to understand how to use a piece of human technology was only one of the ways that Coco amazed people. The picture itself was featured on the cover of National Geographic's 1978 magazine. 
Coco was also featured on the cover of National Geographic in 1985 with a picture of her and her kitten, all ball. While not all of her photos made it into magazines, Coco's love for the camera never stopped. She took many pictures throughout her life at the Gorilla Foundation, including selfies where she would turn the camera around and point the lens at herself before snapping the picture. These incredible photographs helped to show Coco's life as she lived it and give a better insight into the behavior and thoughts of this amazing animal. It is believed that Coco was able to take these pictures of herself and others due to her intelligence. Between 1972 and 1977, Coco underwent several infant IQ tests, including the Cattell Infant Intelligence Scale and Form B of the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test. Her scores fell in the range of 70 to 90, similar to what you might expect from a human infant who is developing slowly but not facing intellectual impairment. However, Penny pointed out that directly comparing Coco's IQ to that of a human infant was not fair because gorillas and humans mature at different rates. So, using a gorilla's age to calculate their IQ in comparison to a human score wasn't very meaningful. Although having an IQ similar to that of a toddler might not sound impressive to most people, it was remarkable for a non-human animal to demonstrate such intelligence and understanding. The research conducted with Coco prompted other scientists to question how we treat animals like dogs, cats, and even mice, and whether they too could experience emotions and comprehend complex thoughts like Coco. Because of her exceptional abilities, Coco gained a lot of famous friends who wanted to interact with her. Over her lifetime, she met celebrities such as Fred Rogers, Betty White, William Shatner, Flea, Leonardo DiCaprio, Peter Gabriel, Sting, and most notably, Robin Williams. They first crossed paths in 2001 at the Gorilla Foundation in California, and it seemed like an instant connection. Robin had come to the foundation to support a campaign that aimed to bring attention to the threats wild gorillas were facing because of poaching. When he met the renowned gorilla, a strong bond quickly formed between them, and they began communicating using the sign language Coco had learned. Penny, in an interview, talked about Coco and how she quickly became friends with Robin. Coco, like us, can tell if a person is kind or not, and in this case, she felt that Robin had a warm and kind heart. Robin was also very impressed with Coco and said that meeting her was something she would never forget. Later on, Robin became an honorary co-chair for a campaign by the Gorilla Foundation to create the Maui Ape Preserve. In 2018, when Coco was 46 years old, she passed away peacefully while sleeping. The Gorilla Foundation said she died of natural causes. As she got older, she had health problems, became slower, and lost her interest in eating. Although it was sad, the chief operating officer of the Gorilla Foundation at that time said that Coco taught the world a lot about her species and showed how much harm humans are causing to the world and its animals. Hopefully, we can all learn from Coco and work to make the world a better place for animals like her. What do you think of this story? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you.